And now for the radio program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. The mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. And I'll tell you why. It's because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plans, even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the Whistler for the tops in entertainment. And for the tops in gasoline quality, it's Signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly independent signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. A question of murder. The terrible truth underlying it all didn't come to Carol Randolph as a bolt out of the blue. Rather, it came slowly, like the gathering of a summer storm. In the beginning, there was only a gentle rustling, like the movement of the leaves before a wind, more to be sensed than actually seen. Later, there were other signs more threatening, more violent, and at last the storm broke in all its fury. But that was later. It began that first day after the honeymoon when they came back to the old house that held so many memories for Ted. Carol paused, smiling at the threshold wondering if he would observe the sentimental custom of carrying her across. And he did. (laughs) Oh, darling. But when he'd set her down again, somehow she realized that it had been a mistake. Ted, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up memories. No, no. Forget it, Carol. Well, we can't entirely, Ted. But she'll never stand in our way, darling. I promise I I said forget it. I mean, she's dead and gone. and, And if anything about this house makes you unhappy, I... I'll tear it down brick by brick. Yes, in the beginning it was only something to be sent. And Carol did try to forget it. But there was no denying that the house seemed to change Ted somehow. The house and the people in it. Even old Mrs. Carter, who had been with Ted's family for so many years, seemed to have a strange reserve about her. A veil something behind the surface of cordiality. It's a pleasure to welcome you here, Carol. I'm sure Ted will be happier now. Thank you. He's told me so much about you, Mrs. Carter. I practically raised him. Then, after his father died and he and Francis came here... Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right, Mrs. Carter. I don't mind talking about Francis, if you want to. Oh, but I don't. It would be best to... Mrs. Carter. Oh, hello, Ted. We were just getting acquainted. Hello, darling. I, uh, I thought maybe you might want to look around the grounds, Carol. Hmm, I'd love to. You'll excuse us, Mrs. Carter? Of course. I've got my work to do. Uh, Oh, did Gillis unpack your things? Gillis? But I told... Oh, I I meant to talk to you about that, Ted. Later? Uh, Yes, yes, of course, Carol. Come along, please, Carol. Now, how about the rose garden first, huh? Fine. Ted. Yes, darling? What was that about Gillis? Oh, why, nothing, Carol. Nothing for you to worry about. Now, uh, let's look at the ground, shall we? Oh. Yes, darling, of course. Good 
Good evening, madame. Oh, hello. You must be Gillis. Yes. I didn't get a chance to thank you for putting everything away for me. I appreciate it, Gillis. It's what I'm supposed to do, madame. Uh, do you want both windows open, madame? Oh, uh, just that one is fine. Gillis. That's an unusual name. My name is really Marie, madame. She always called me Gillis. Said it sounded more continental-like. The first Mrs. Randall? That's right. Oh, I'm sorry, madame, I didn't Gillis, mean... let's understand each other. I'm not sensitive about Ted's having been married before. You don't have to feel strange around me. I'm sure we're going to get along just fine. Oh, then you've spoken to Mr. Randolph about me? Spoken to him? Yes. You see, he said that I should be let go. Oh? Mrs. Carter says it's because I talk too much. I don't mean to. Words don't come too easy for me, madame. The right ones, I mean. And when they asked me all those questions at the inquest, Mr. Randolph didn't like... Inquest? Gillis, you don't mean inquest. They only hold an inquest when there's something strange about a death. I know, madame. And there certainly was something strange about... Gillis. Yes, madame? You may go now. I won't need anything further. Yes, madame. Yes, Carol, it all began slowly. But as you watch Gillis shuffle off down the hall, you're conscious of a chill in the air. And in spite of yourself, you shudder slightly before you're able to push it out of your mind and go downstairs to join Ted. But by the following evening, the whole incident is forgotten as you and Ted entertain Dave Arnold, one of his oldest friends. <laughs> I'll never friends. forget that one. <laughs> oh, you two must really have had good times Strangers. together. Good and bad, eh, Tim? Oh, that's right. <laughs> So I must say, you've always managed to get the things you wanted from life. Uh, that's a compliment, Carol, from an envious, dyed-in-the-wool bachelor. Oh, you shouldn't complain, Dave. There's certainly something you can do about that. Oh, uh, no, no. Too busy with my career. Oh? Well, Ted's in the district attorney's office, and he's found time for marriage. Well, that's just it. Then, mine wants to get in. And you know, when these political machines get entrenched, they can get away with murder. You make it sound horrible. No defense, darling? Oh, we don't need one. We put our case up to the voters, remember? I certainly do. What we need is a Ted Randolph to run our campaign. Uh, I couldn't swing you over to our side, could I, Tim? <laughs> we can promise big things, too. No, I'm afraid not, Dave. Oh, I'll admit your candidate's all right, but I think our man's a little better. Well, nothing to do then but dig up some dirt in your past and smear you. Dave. I'm joking, Carol. Uh, deadly business politics. I say, I've got to run. Uh, big day for me tomorrow. Well, nice to have you again, Dave. Yes, and make it more often in the future, hmm? Uh, you've got a great deal. The dinner was wonderful. Good night, Ted. Carol. Good night. Thanks again. Good night. Anytime, Dave. Good night. <sighs> was everything all right? Oh, yes, sure. It's perfect. You know, I like him. Dave? Oh, he, he's all right. All right. I think he's charming. And he likes you. The way he hangs on every word when you're talking. Oh, yes. Just waiting for me to make a slip. A slip? Oh, Ted. Oh, why, does that surprise you? Surprise? Why, it shocks me. You're not serious. Look, darling, I love you, but sometimes you're a little naive. Why, Dave's an old friend, yes, but he's in the opposite political camp. Don't forget that. Why, he'd use anything to get us out of office. And he wasn't kidding when he said he'd smear me if he could. Ted, you must be exaggerating. Besides, what could he possibly find out about you? The... I, uh... Carol, I've got some work to do. Would, would you excuse me for a while? Ted, wait. Yes? I've... I've been wanting to talk to you. Tell me, how did you and Francis get along? Why, we... We, we quarreled. Is that all? No. No, once upon a New Year's, there was a girl I met on a trip to St. Louis. A girl I'd known for a long time. After Frances died, I married her. And I love her very much. That's all that's important. Oh, Ted. Ted, you didn't ever quarrel with Frances about me. Is that what's worrying you? Why, of course not, darling. Now forget it, please. <laughs> Ah, 
after that, you do try to forget, don't you, Carol? But it isn't that easy. When you go upstairs to your room, Gillis is there. You discover that she's not only talkative, but inquisitive, too. Worst of all, she asks a question that you can't answer. A startling question. Excuse me, madame. Uh, will Mr. Ben ever come back? Who's Mr. Ben? Why, uh, Mr. Randolph's brother, madame. You've never met him? Oh, oh, yes, yes, Ted's brother. I wondered if they had ever patched things up. It was a terrible argument they had, you know, the day she, uh, the day Mrs. Randolph died. I'll never forget that shocking way to start a new year. A new year? Yeah, it was just a few days after. I remember Mr. Randolph had just come back from a trip from St. Louis. Oh, it was terrible, madame. They had a regular knockdown and drag out. She came, she came screaming for a divorce. A divorce? That's what they quarreled about. Mrs. Randolph said she should rather be dead than go on things being like they were. Poor woman. Little did she know that in less than 12 hours from then, she would be dead. What did you say, Gillis? When did she die? The very next morning, early. Didn't you know, madame? It was, it was an accident. She started to fix her bath and slipped somehow. Tried to grab something to keep from falling and caught a loose wire from the electric heater. Oh, no. Yes. And I never have been able to understand how a bare wire could have come loose that way. Oh, it was terrible, madame. She was electrocuted on the spot. With the prologue of A Question of Murder, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Did you know that contract bridge has become such a popular game it's now played by almost half of the adults in America? Well, that's why Signal Oil Company decided that something should be done for this important group of our listeners. So they had a series of six lessons prepared by none other than that famous bridge expert, Robert Lee Johnson, of whom Ely Culbertson says, no one is better qualified to prepare a course of bridge lessons than Robert Lee Johnson. I recommend these signal bridge lessons to all who are interested in learning bridge or improving their game. After hearing such praise from Ely Culbertson, you've no doubt like to know where you can get copies of these signal bridge lessons. The answer is right down at your neighborhood signal dealers. Each week, a new lesson in this series of six is yours for the asking. So be sure to drop by your signal dealers at least once each week so you won't miss a single one in signal series of Contract Bridge in six easy lessons. And now back to the whistler. The gathering storm is closing in, isn't it, Carol? like dark warning clouds before the storm. You're sure now that Ted lied about the argument with Francis, his first wife. He told you it was nothing serious, didn't concern you. But from what Gillis has told you, you're certain the quarrel was over you, and that shortly afterwards, Francis was dead. It's a terrible knowledge you possess, isn't it? Because you don't know what to do about it. The next morning, you spend walking around the grounds, going over the whole nightmare in your mind. And then as you start back across the terrace to the house... Well, hello. Uh, oh. You must be the new Mrs. Randolph, huh? I'm sorry, I don't believe we... No, my dear, we haven't met. We're going to be real friends. <laughs> I'm Ben, Ted's brother. Oh, I'm sure he's told you all about Brother Ben. Oh, yes, yes, certainly. Ted's spoken of you so often, I... I did wonder when I was going to have the pleasure. <laughs> nice work, Mrs. Randolph. Uh, shall we go in the house? Carol? Oh, you have talked to Ted about me. Oh, frankly, no. I simply read in papers. I was going to run down here sooner, but I allowed time for you two to get back from the honeymoon. A few days to get settled. Well, that's for you, Carol. That's it. My, my. Place has been all redone, huh? Your idea? Why, no. It was like this when I... Mrs. Carter, I'll bet. <laughs> Thinks of everything, that woman. Ted's always been her favorite. Yes, I know. 
Well, I'm sure you'll want to say hello to Mrs. Carter. She's in the hall. Oh, uh, Mrs. Oh, don't Carter. don't bother if she's busy. I really don't. Yes, Carol. I really wanted a few moments to talk to you. Yes, it's me. <laughs> the prodigal, the black sheep. The... I'm sorry, Mr. Randolph, you can't stay. Mrs. Carter. I have my orders. But why? I'm the... Oh, so you haven't told her about me, Mrs. Carter. What a rascal I am, a stealer. Please, Mr. Randolph, don't make it unpleasant for me. I'm hired to do exactly... No, 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 old girl, don't get the blood temperature up. I'm not staying. <laughs> I have a perfectly satisfactory place to stay in town, the Marlboro. Nothing but the best. Uh, however, Mrs. Carter... Yes? Tell Ted I'll be dropping in, huh? Have to see him. Perhaps tomorrow night? I'll tell him. I intend to speak to Ted, too, Ben. You may come tonight if you wish. Oh, no, no. Always like to forewarn my brother... He's a planner, you know, Carol. He likes to know just what's going on. Exactly where he's going, dates, times, places. <laughs> you gotta let him think he's in the driver's seat. Haven't you found it so? I'm discovering things that I didn't know. Oh, and your discoveries will be endless. I gotta admire the boy, though. You'd think he was the senior, huh? The regular little Napoleon Teddy boy. The way he makes circumstances. Brilliant. Makes the circumstances? Yeah, you know, plans, fixes things, even covers things up. Eh, Mrs. Carter? I'll show you out. No, wait, just a minute, Ben. Did Ted cover something up? Oh, he hasn't told you about the unusual circumstances of Francis's accident, huh? I guess he wouldn't. Well, tomorrow night. Get me in his date book, Mrs. Carter. I'll show you to the door. Don't bother. Good afternoon, all. Oh, the nerve. Just a minute, Mrs. Carter. Yes, Carol? Mrs. Carter, I've... I found you very kind, very considerate since I came here. But I... I think I have a right to... I'm sorry, Carol. Really. What about Ben? Well, Ben isn't a nice person. He upsets Ted, all of us. Please, why not forget what happened? Enjoy your husband, Carol, your beautiful home. Just don't puzzle and fret over things that are... that are dead and gone. I wish it were that simple, Mrs. Carter. Marlborough Hotel. Mr. Ben Randolph, please. Thank you. Yes? Ben, this is Carol. Uh, oh, yes. How sweet of you, Carol, to call me. Ben, I, I can't talk very long. I want to see you right away. Oh, I'm sorry, Carol. I have an appointment. But it's important, Ben. It's, it's terribly important. There's something I have to know about Francis' accident. Oh. So that's it, huh? All right, Carol. I have a delightful cocktail bar here. I'll meet you in, say, uh, half an hour. That is, if you're sure you want to come. I am sure, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> You are sure, aren't you, Carol? The time has passed when you can push your doubts away in a corner of your mind. You must know all the facts. And Ted's brother, Ben, seems to be the only one you can turn to. Twenty minutes later, you start across the lobby to the cocktail lounge. Oh, Carol, Carol, wait. Ted! Yes. Mrs. Carter called me. I... I'm sorry, Carol, but you mustn't meet him. She told you. She was spying on me. She heard me ask about Francis. No, no, no you're wrong. She just happened to hear you mention Ben's name, that's all. I, I, I guess the rest. Carol, I, I don't want you to see him. And is there some reason why I shouldn't? No, Carol, only that it, it won't do you any good. I, I'll have to ask you to go home. I'll deal with my brother, Ben. You turn and hurry away from Ted. Driving home, your hands tremble holding the wheel. By the time you reach the house and start inside... A terrible, sick feeling sweeps over you. Your brain seems to pound miserably. And as you start up the stairs, your legs grow weaker and weaker until they give way beneath you. When you awake, you find yourself in bed. Mrs. Carter is looking down at you, smiling her quiet, assured smile. Feeling better, Carol? Yes. Why? Well, I feel fine. 
Why did you put me to bed? I you want to... fainted going up the stairs. I told Ted when he came home. He agrees with me that you should stay in bed for a while. Is there uh, anything you want me to bring you? No. No, nothing. Just leave me alone. <laughs> It's a breathless moment now, isn't it, Carol? The quiet before the storm. You fight against the feeling that perhaps you're to be held prisoner. But as you hear Mrs. Carter's footsteps going down the stairs, you know you have to find out. You cross to the door, find it unlocked, and then tiptoe to the head of the stairs. And then you stop, frozen in your uh, tracks as that? Ted's voice drifts up oh, from the study. Dave Arnold, huh? Well, we expected him to do some snooping. Yeah, that's right, he was here to dinner, but... I know I didn't let anything slip. Well, Chief, if anything I've done should prevent you from being re-elected... Carol? No. All she knows is that Francis's death was an accident. I'm sure of it. I, I haven't told her anything else, and I, I don't intend to. Uh, and besides, Chief, she... She won't be leaving the house for some time. She, uh... Well, she isn't feeling very well. <laughs> Yes, the storm has broken now, hasn't it, Carol? And the meaning of everything that's happened is clear to you. The man Ted was talking to was the district attorney. He knows the truth about Francis's death and is helping to cover it up. And then you remember what Dave Arnold said about entrenched political machines, that they can get away with murder. And from what Ted said on the phone, you know you're being held prisoner. But it's more than just you now, Carol. More than your happiness or your safety. There's a principle involved. A principle that affects thousands of people. And suddenly you realize only one man you know can do anything about it. Your husband's political enemy, Dave Arnold. You go back to your room, take a piece of paper from the desk and scrawl a hurried note. Then a few minutes later... You rang for me, madame? Yes, Gillis, here. I've, I've written a letter. I've... I want you to take it and mail it. A letter? Yes, madame. And, Gillis, it must be done right away. Don't let anything stop you. I won't, madame. Uh, hide it, Gillis. Hide the letter. Oh, Gillis. I didn't know you were in here. She, she was just leaving, Mrs. Carter. Thanks for looking in, Gillis, but I, I don't need anything. You may go. Yes, madame. Is there anything I can do for you, Carol? No, Mrs. Carter. There's nothing anyone can do for me. Right now. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. But first, a message, especially for you drivers who have new cars or expect to be getting one. Just any motor oil won't do, you know, for today's high-efficiency motors. No, sir. They need special protection against corrosion, wear, and carbon if they're to give you the long, trouble-free service you have a right to expect. That's why Signal Oil Company brought out Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil, a new type lubricant especially created to give modern motors this extra protection. Of course, Signal Premium has 100% pure paraffin base, but in addition, scientific new compounds have been added. As a result, tests prove that this new type signal oil actually keeps motors six times cleaner and reduces cylinder wear one-third. Now get that, motors actually stay six times cleaner and cylinder wear is reduced one-third with signal premium compounded motor oil. So if you want to keep the performance of your car young, make your next oil change a change for the better. Switch to the new type Signal Oil that's your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. And now, back to the Whistler. You can't fight the storm anymore, Carol. You're weary of it of thinking about Ted and the way Francis, his first wife, died. It was shortly after he saw you in St. Louis that she refused him a divorce. And it's all too clear to you what happened to her. It's an hour now since you gave Gillis the note for Dave. 
explaining everything. Suddenly you realize that you can't face Ted when it's over. You want to get away, take a train for another city and try somehow to forget. Put this terrible nightmare behind you. You dress quickly, slip out into the hall and tiptoe down the stairs. You wait until you can hear Mrs. Carter in another part of the house and then run for the door. You're hurrying down the drive to the garage where your car is parked when... Well, we meet again, Carol. And just where I ran into you before. Ben. Oh, don't let me alarm you. Ted's furious enough with me as it is. I, uh, I came to apologize. He talked to you about me? Oh, he certainly did. Poor old Ted. His women give him a lot of trouble. Francis certainly led him a merry chase. In, uh, in another direction, of course. Francis? Yeah. First she tried spending his money and... When that got boring, she, uh, she started spending some of it on me. Well, that was pleasant for a while. Oh, you mean Francis was interested in you? Interested? <laughs> well, that's one way of putting it, yes. Tell me about her, Ben. All right. Well, she wanted to marry me. It, it scared me silly when I found out. Oh, we had our laugh together, sure, but marriage? Well, that's a little bit more than stealing your brother's slingshot, huh? You... You and, and, and Francis. That's why Ted asked her for a divorce. It wasn't me at all. What? Oh, he didn't ask her for a divorce, Carol. She asked him. Oh, they had a terrible row about it. But you know, Ted, he clings to that for better or worse idea. And then, too, there's his position, the, the election and all. They decided it wasn't the sort of thing to let that Dave Arnold crowd find out about and twist all out of shape. Her accident, then. What did happen? Well... Don't say you got this from me now. But it's simple enough. Francis tried to kill Ted, Carol. She smeared the bathtub with soap, ran the electric heater wire along in the back of the towel rack. What? Yeah. She had it all set up for Ted. She hadn't planned on slipping, and instead of Ted grabbing it, she got it herself. <laughs> really an accident, huh? Oh, and Ted protected her, kept it quiet. Well, it was as much for his boss as for her. The district attorney couldn't get any place with rumors floating around that one of his boys oh, was... Carol! Carol! Ted's voice calling from the house seems to bring your heart up into your throat. You move slowly along the drive, almost stumbling, the tears starting as you realize what you've done. That note you sent to Dave, it will ruin Ted, the district attorney, everything. You reach the terrace, stop, unable to go any farther. Carol? Mrs. Carter... You're feeling better, aren't you, dear? Mrs. Carter, I... I can't see Ted now. I... Yes, you can. Here. Please forgive a meddling old lady, Carol, but I took this letter from Gillis. You didn't really want it mailed, did you? The letter? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Carter. Carol! Where are you, Carol? Your husband is calling, Mrs. Randolph. I think you should go to him. I have my work to do. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Lorette Philbrandt, Joseph Kearns, and Gerald Moore. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Beth Barnes and music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at this same time next Wednesday, another strange tale by The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.